Welcome to season four of the To Health With That podcast, where we break up big health topics into small bites. I'm your host, naturopathic doctor, Amy Newsel, and this season, we'll dive into something we are all familiar with, fatigue. What is it? Why does it happen? Most importantly, how can we fix it outside of this? Enjoy the video version of this podcast on YouTube. The channel is at to help with that. This week, let's talk about energy, fatigue, and sex hormones. Sex hormones are responsible for so much more than just sexual maturation and reproduction. When they're off balance, we see far-reaching health consequences. Sex hormone balance affects energy level, sleep quality, strength, confidence, motivation, drive, and, of course, all of the things that we normally associate with sex hormones. Let's talk estrogen first. This is kind of the biggie. Estrogen plays a role in almost every aspect of energy and metabolism. It's well known to make both women and men feel more energetic, more confident, sexier, and keep them slimmer. Estrogen works in the hypothalamus to reduce food cravings and increase thermogenic fat burning. It also works in peripheral tissues to regulate insulin sensitivity, fat distribution, and thermogenesis. Excess estrogens can push people too far, slowing metabolism, promoting fat storage, and causing gross hormone imbalance. In modern society, it's far more likely for adults to be estrogen dominant than it is to be estrogen deficient. Estrogen dominance, as this imbalance is called, can come from your own genetics and hormone production, especially in situations where there's complex hormone or endocrine disease like endometriosis or PCOS. More often, it comes from exposure to xenoestrogens. They're coming from outside of your body in products like plastics, plasticizers, fragrances, phthalates, and parabens. Other causes of estrogen dominance include alcoholism, obesity, and chronic stress. So none of us have any of those. Managing excess estrogens comes down to two big strategies. Number one, avoid the estrogens coming in from the outside. So decrease your plastic use. Invest in stainless steel or Pyrex water bottles. Stop using the disposables. Avoid plastic food storage containers. If you're reheating food, make sure you're not putting plastic in the microwave. That's a big deal. Also, avoid synthetic fragrances in air fresheners, candles, and personal care products because many of those mimic estrogen in the human body. Avoid phthalates and parabens in your personal care products, especially things like lotion, sunscreen, that sort of thing. Minimize the use of pesticides and herbicides on your lawn, right? Weeds won't kill you, but pesticides might. And generally work to cut down your chemical exposure overall. Also, reduce your intake of alcohol and coffee, both of which raise estrogen levels, and keep your weight at a normal level if possible because fat cells make their own estrogen. So if you are holding on to extra fat, then all of that extra fat is manufacturing hormones for you, which is a little dicey. Strategy number two is to detoxify estrogen more effectively. So if you can reduce what's coming in and increase what's going out, we're actually in a good state. Estrogen detoxification needs healthy methylation, which is everything we talk about for MTHFR, right? Good methylated folate, methyl B12, background of the other B vitamins, and really making sure that the folic acid is out of your life, out of your diet. Work to keep your blood sugars balanced. Increase your dietary fiber, because fiber helps to catch the detoxified estrogen in your digestive tract. Also, add some ground flax seeds to your daily routine. The fiber in flax is a bonus, but the real gem here is high lignin content, because flax lignins, lignins, that's a hard word to say, flax lignins help to convert strong, very bioactive forms of estrogen into weaker, gentler forms which overall helps the balance of how these hormones are acting in your body. There are also supplements that can do the same thing, namely indole 3 carbonyl and calcium D-glucarate, but they're far more expensive 
and it's more difficult to maintain a supplement routine long term. Let's talk progesterone. So progesterone is as necessary as estrogen, but it's more well known for its effects on sleep, sleep quality, and also balance with stress hormones. It's used to make extra cortisol, which is your wake up and stress response hormone in times of need. And so it is really crucial then when you're in some kind of a situation response, which, you know, in modern life, every day is situation response. Progesterone levels are more likely to be low in modern society because of this constant situation response. So helping to ensure that you have adequate amounts can help preserve your cortisol levels, but also restore restful sleep. Men also need progesterone, which is the precursor to the hormone we all think of as the male sex hormone, testosterone. Also, as men age, their estrogen levels tend to rise for the reasons we've talked about. And because of that, both progesterone and testosterone levels plummet. Raising progesterone naturally comes down to managing estrogen levels and xenoestrogens, but also ensuring you have adequate intake of vitamin B6, zinc, and magnesium can also help. In addition, progesterone is commonly prescribed as a cream or capsule, and very often this is the best thing to overcome hormone-related insomnia. So testosterone, the classically male sex hormone, boosts energy, libido, lean muscle mass, strength, and overall feelings of goodness, right? Well-being. It's a great thing for both men and women as long as it is in a balanced and natural amount. Too much testosterone leads to aggression, excess face and body hair, and ultimately weight gain. That isn't what we're going for either. For us modern folks with low testosterone, the problem may not actually be that there's not enough testosterone. It could be the estrogen again. You can see a pattern here. High estrogen levels raise the hormone carrier molecule in the blood called sex hormone binding globulin. And this is meant to bind up and control the estrogen, but unfortunately it forms a much stronger bond with testosterone. So what we end up seeing is free testosterone levels getting all bound up with the sex hormone binding globulin and leaving the estrogen floating out there. Not so helpful. So one of the best ways to free up testosterone is to manage estrogens. Again, <laughs> this is a repeating theme. Limit your exposure to outside estrogens and boost your estrogen detox. Also, cut down the alcohol and work on weight if you can. For men, it's especially important to have weight-bearing exercise and muscle-building exercise because men's physiology is designed to have a higher resting musculature than women's physiology is. Make sure that you're doing everything you can to detoxify estrogens if you're working on losing weight because, as we talked about earlier, those fat cells do have their own little hormone environment and breaking them open can cause some spikes in estrogen. So that's a time when you really need those flax seeds. There's some great supplements to support testosterone levels. Zinc is well known to increase testosterone production, as are shilajit and fulvic acid. Also, herbs have long been used to boost testosterone, including tribulus, ashwagandha, and panax ginseng. Energy levels also fluctuate normally through the monthly menstrual cycle for women. They're supposed to, right? This is how our physiology actually works to protect our reproductive health. Energy is highest around ovulation when testosterone and estrogen are peaking and the lowest just before and during your period when estrogen and testosterone are low and progesterone is high. This rhythm is completely normal. This isn't something that should be fixed. This is something that you can lean into as a woman to make sure that you are optimizing your schedule around your cycle. At the end of the day, it seems like the moral of this whole hormone-related energy story is that things need to be balanced for you to have energy. The most common cause of imbalance is extra estrogen, and getting rid of that comes down to avoiding that extra estrogen and boosting detoxification. So, if you take away nothing else today, maybe stock up on some ground flax seeds and add a tablespoon a day to your diet. Thank you so much for listening, watching, and spending time with me today. In the next episode, we'll get into the link between energy and oxygen intake, 
and talk about a sleep hack that sounds ridiculous, but works. It's called mouth taping.